This is a certified passive house. What exactly is a certified passive house? We find out coming up next and what a beautiful front, but the magic happens out back. More to come. Stay with us. Listen, I love real estate and I love making my way inside houses, but this is a different house. It's the only one of its kind in Vancouver, actually only six in Canada. Lucho, we're talking about a certified passive house. What does that actually mean? Well, when we talk about a certified passive house, we are trying to meet three specific criteria which have to do with consumption. Uh, the first is uh, heat demand. Second is energy consumption, and the third is air tightness. Okay, so that all sounds like things that we would want to have. So how, when we look at this outside of this house, how are you accomplishing that with the design here? Right, so when we're starting the design, we want to keep the form, first of all, as simple as possible. And then we go with a very efficient envelope, which includes walls, windows and doors, roof, and added insulation. So when you talk about the form, I mean the shape of it, it's rectangle. Mm -hmm. So how does that help the situation? Right, so uh, if we keep the form compact and simple, we avoid architectural excesses. Anytime we have ins and outs, bay windows, different articulation, that adds to the surface area of the house, which is harder to heat and also loses more heat. Okay, let's talk about the outside because I'm looking at those windows, lovely windows. Yeah. Are the blinds on the wrong side? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it might appear that way, but actually they're placed there for a very specific reason. And this is the south facade where we get solar gain. So we want to be able to control that heat in the summer. And the only way we can really do that is from the outside. Okay, so we talk about solar, there must be solar panels. Yes, we have solar panels on the roof, which is not necessary for passive house. But when we're at such a low energy consumption, we can add them to a building like this and actually produce more than we uh, consume. Excellent. Well, it's very cool on the outside and I love all of what you're talking about. And why wouldn't we here in Vancouver? <laughs> um, tell you what, I want to make my way inside. We are going to make our way inside coming up next and get to the real heart of what makes this a certified passive house. Well, I loved so many things about the outside of this certified passive house, but Lucha, we had to make our way inside and hello, absolutely lovely. We should point out that you are not only the architect and designer, and by design we meet everything from outside to inside, and also builder. Yes. How lovely is this? You haven't sacrificed anything with respect to, uh, you know, fashion. It's got function and fashion. Beautiful. Thank you. No, um, one of the key elements of sustainable design, we think, is if it's not beautiful, it's not sustainable. So the design, the layout, the look of the house is just as important as the efficiency. Okay, so it's a very open concept. How does that help you meet the criteria? One of the three things, of course, that we talked about in our earlier segment. Well, it's easier for us to both heat and ventilate a single volume. So if we keep, uh, for instance, the main floor as one large volume, we can have a consistent temperature throughout the whole room rather than having maybe one room colder or one room warmer than the rest of the house. Now, when we talk about energy efficiency, I mean, this is one of those cases where every part of the house is energy efficient. Most of us think we've done our part with appliances, but you've been able to go beyond that. Yes. So two of the most important elements of the house are the windows and the walls. So what we'll see in a house like this that's different from a standard build is we'll have much thicker walls simply because we're adding insulation, but we'll also have triple glazed and very highly energy efficient windows. The frames are also insulated and that's very important for keeping heat within the building. Okay, speaking of heat, you know, on those cold winter nights, we, we got to turn up the furnace, we got to turn up the heat. Where is the furnace? Well, actually we don't have a furnace. We only have a very small heat source, which is uh, a baseboard electric heater upstairs and an infrared heater down here. But the guts of the house, what makes this work is the HRV, the heat recovery ventilator. Okay, and speaking of um, design and upstairs, you refer to upstairs, what do we see on the second floor? Well, we have a similar open volume on the second floor, which also has large openings to the south, which allow us to trap that heat in that volume and distribute it around the rest of the house. So cool. So much to learn. Thank you so much and congratulations again. This is uh, the only certified passive house in Vancouver, only one of six in the entire country. Thank you yes. so much and congratulations. Thank you.
All right, Dawn's in studio with us mm -hmm. this morning again, filling in for us. Well, there it is. It isn't a certified passive house unless you see this plaque on the outside of the house. And by the way, this is the only one in Vancouver. Um, Chris, you know, this is the gold standard. Yes. Maybe people can't get there right now, but what is the city, uh, how does it really align with what the city is trying to do? Yeah, it aligns quite well. The city has greenest city goals um, and aligns very well with those. We also have 100% renewable goals and a, a certified passive house achieves 100% renewable as well as um, carbon neutral and new construction. So with respect to bylaws and new bylaws, yes. what are you doing? Yeah, the city of Vancouver is improving uh, the bylaws, so the minimum you can build to, um, to reduce the gap between uh, the minimum and certified passive house, to improve the comfort and health uh, and lower operating costs of every new home in Vancouver. So one example is we're requiring heat recovery ventilators or HRVs, which recover uh, the waste heat uh, before it's exhausted from the house and use it to preheat air coming in. So it improves the air quality while at the same time reducing costs. That is incredible. Now again, when I talk about this as being the gold standard, a lot of people still want to be able to do something, right? I mean, yeah. we all change our light bulbs, we do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. What can people start doing right now? Yeah, I mean, some examples. So if, if people want to reduce uh, air leakage, so they can draft proof their home and that'll help it to improve comfort. Uh, if they're replacing their windows, they can replace them with triple glazed windows like this house has. Uh, if they're in an older home, maybe 1950s or older, they can also add insulation to the walls. So there are a number of things they can do to reduce their uh, greenhouse gas footprint Fantastic. and energy Fantastic. So much great information and you know, we can always dream, right? Indeed. Certified passive house. I'd love it. Yeah. All right. Thanks a